Hi, this is Rob Ansbach, and I am with Lori Lowenberg. And today we're going to talk about dreams, pinups, and this guy right here, Brian Cranston. Oh. <laughs> so, Lori, thank you for taking the time to uh, come on board. I know we had a little bit of uh, difficulty with the audio, but I'm glad you're here. Well, I appreciate your patience. <laughs> so, Let's first talk about Brian Cranston and get this guy out of the way. Okay. Today's his birthday. I have no idea how old he is, but I got this picture from our mutual friend, Lori, mm -hmm. and you painted it. I did. I'm obsessed with Breaking Bad, <laughs> and I'm also an artist, so sometimes I have to paint out my obsession to get it out of my system. So I did. Um, do you want to see the original? Sure. Okay, it's right here. Let me get it for you. Here it is. Here's the original. Wow. So what got you to paint him, and how did you get my copy autographed? Well, thanks to our mutual friend who lives out in Los Angeles. Uh, she attended a Breaking Bad um, CD release party when they put the whole series on DVD, not CD. And she happened to be able to sit in the front row, literally seven feet from Brian Cranston. And I had just finished painting the portrait. And I didn't have time to ship it out to her to get him to sign it. So I just sent her a high-res digital image of it. She printed it up, printed up a few, and had him sign some. And she said that he just stood there for a good couple of minutes taking it in. <sighs> so what got you inspired to, to do the, you know, because you painted Brian, but now you're painting pinups. That's kind of different. It's different, yeah. Um, I came out of the womb drawing pretty much, and I, I always enjoy drawing women, Marilyn Monroe in particular, because she herself is a piece of art. And um, I actually almost attended the school that Walt Disney built in um, Anaheim, California. Um, but personal things got in the way and I didn't wind up going, and instead I kind of fell into the dream world and started building my career as a dream analyst. I put my art aside to build a career, but my dreams kept telling me to paint and they would nag me and I would have recurring dreams of dying fish, which represented my creative ideas that I was neglecting and letting die. So finally I said, okay, okay, subconscious, I'll do what you're telling me. And I started painting again and I would post it when I'm painting on Facebook and people go, oh, that's cool. And our friend Lori, she's kind of an important person in my life. She said, would you paint me as a pinup for my wine label? And I was like, that's a good idea. Yes, I will do that for you. She loved the first one so much, she asked for another one. So she has two different pinups, one for the white label, one for the red label. And I would post the progress of what I was painting on Facebook and people would be interested and then they wanted one for themselves or wanted one for their wife. And my pinup business started like that. This was over a year ago and I, been thriving ever since. Now you post a lot of pictures on Facebook and you also get a lot of slack. You know? <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> you know, and, and you know, and, and I've watched these posts and, and some of these pictures that you post are really great. But then you have these prudes, as we like to call them, who report you to Facebook. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Um, I let Facebook handle it. Facebook always takes my side because it's art. You know, I've been reported for side boob. <laughs> I've been reported for a Marilyn Monroe nipple, you know. But if you're going to be a friend with a pinup artist, you need to know what to expect to see in your feed. Mm -hmm. And yeah. where, I mean, is that where most of your business is coming from, Facebook, or do you yes. put it anywhere else? Um, I would say about 95% of my business comes from Facebook. I've had one from Instagram and one from word of mouth. Everything else is through Facebook. Because Facebook goes viral and it's very great for anything that's visual, visual or 
demonstrable or is demonstrable the right word <laughs> or you can demonstrate and show off you know and people love to share it and it just spreads like wildfire it's been definitely my bread and butter now you started out though doing dreams mm -hmm. analyzing i guess other people so yeah. you know i i watch your posts and and you've been on tv you've been on the news you've been everywhere how do you get that publicity um i do it myself I'm actually going to be on the Today Show again on 325, so mark your calendar. Um, you just learn how to write a good pitch. You know, you want to get right to the point. You want to um, put bullet points about yourself and your topic because producers, editors, whoever it is you're pitching, they get hundreds daily and they're going to give you about 10 seconds or less to look at your email or listen to your voicemail before they move on. So you got to get right to it. You know, I add a couple testimonials, put maybe five bullet points top that you're going to talk about and your contact information and also a nice link to your work so they can see you're credible. And um, you just keep sending out pitches till something sticks. And I think that's the problem, though, with most entrepreneurs is after, after something doesn't stick a few times, they give up. Yeah, right. And when pitching media, just because they say no or ignoring you is also the way they say no, doesn't mean that they're not going to give you a yes later down the road. So go ahead and don't be a pest. Maybe once a month, contact them with a different angle. You know, um, like the Today Show loves me because every time I contact them, I give them a new angle. You know, for Halloween, I pitch them on nightmares, you know, what they really mean and uh, how to help your children with nightmares. And this time I pitched them on what top celebrities dream about and what it says about their personality. So just come up with something new every single time you pitch. And if you can... Um, ride the coattails of a current news story, that's even better, you know, and you'll, you'll get a, a yes eventually. You know, I, I noticed that, that, wow, a little feed, feedback, sorry. Um, <clears throat> I noticed that you like to pitch your dreams. You know, you ask people, you know, what's your latest dream? What's your oddball dream? And then you also post some of your weird <laughs> dreams. I think the craziest one I've had was the one with the little people that traveled in cars made out of peanut butter and teeth. Do you remember that one? <laughs> I'm thinking, what was she smoking? I know. <laughs> yeah, so I, Facebook has been um, hugely helpful for me in, in both my careers, in my, my pinup career and in my dream career, because when I was writing my book, Dream On It, Unlock Your Dreams, Change Your Life, um, I used Facebook to get the dreams I needed for each chapter. And you put out there, what did you dream last night? No problem. I get dreams within minutes. So it really helps speed up the writing process of my book. And I also, every Wednesday, I put out a query for your dreams because I write a, a syndicated newspaper column. So, and just always do that day. And I can count on Facebook to give it, give me anything I need within minutes. But what got you into the whole, whole dream thing? Um, well, my own dreams, you know, I, I can remember my dream since I was two years old and I would, um, annoy my parents to death every morning with my dreams. So I would start to draw them. And then when I got older, I'd write them down. And, um, it really wasn't until after my grandfather died when I was 19 that, um, a dream I had, which sure felt like it was him coming through to let me know he's still around. I, I, when I woke up from the dream, I could still smell his old spice. It was so vivid and real. That's the dream that made me realize I would, needed to find out what was going on. You know, it's like we live this whole other life at night. And, and the dream sometimes can be so powerful and moving. And sometimes it can be horribly frightening. So what is this? So long story short, I studied dream psychology under a Ph.D., and I was so impressed about how practical dreams really are. It's just a thinking process. You know, you're just thinking in metaphors and symbolism. And it's, it's so practical when you can pay attention to your dream, understand the message, and apply it to your life. 
it can really give you a big edge in life because it's like you're a conversation with your intuition, you know, helping you and guiding you through every everything you face in life. So there wasn't a whole lot of anyone out there, this was back in the early 90s, um, that offered anything as far as dreams on TV, on radio, even in books. There wasn't much. So I just decided I needed to go out there and do it because there's something really cool we all have inside of us that we need to pay attention to. So I started booking myself on radio and then we get all kinds of calls and people say, you have a book? No, I guess I should write one. <laughs> it just kind of, you know, snowballed from there. You know, when I, when I launched uh, into the social media realm after spending 20 years as a carpet cleaner, people didn't take me serious because they knew me as this carpet cleaner. So now it's like I'm doing a complete 180 and I'm, I'm being a coach and I'm teaching social and teaching SEO and I'm, I'm writing books and they're like, a carpet cleaner can't do that. What is, and, 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 and then I look at you and you're like doing two different things and, and it's, people have to wonder, hey, what, what, what's she all about? Well, you know, I think that, that you and I are both an example of how you can always grow. There's always room and in, in, in time in your life to change it up. Mm -hmm. you know, there's so much out there you can get better at, that you can help others with, that, you know, is there for the taking. Just do it. Now, you know, I think technology is, is well, my personal opinion, I try not to sleep next to my cell phone or right. any of my electronic gadgets, um, you know, you know, for, I guess, what I've been reading about the, you know, the signals, but can that affect your dreams? It can limit your sleep, which will limit your dreams. Um, because, yeah, like it, the, the blue screen, the blue light from our devices stimulates the brain and it will keep your brain highly active for a good hour once you turn it off. So doing that right before bedtime isn't a good idea. Um, and also, if, if you, you know, you're always checking your devices, you know, your brain gets used to the pattern and you're going to, it, that's going to affect your sleep too, because it, even the subconscious is going, okay, we need to check, we need to check, and then you'll wake up and you'll check. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, definitely that's something that is good to limit and especially remove yourself from any device an hour before bedtime. You know, I like to watch TV late at night before I go to bed, you know, we all have TVs in our bedrooms now. And, um, you know, if we're watching uh, a shoot 'em up where people are getting killed, my wife always says, let's watch a comedy next because I don't want to have to dream about this the rest of the night. <laughs> right. You know, and I, and I do guess that some of the, the, the TV programs do affect how people dream because they're, they're taking some of that instance that they just saw on TV. Yes. Yeah, and you know, your dreams will take things from the day, even something that happened this morning. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be right before you go to sleep. If your subconscious mind identifies with something you're seeing on TV or reading in a book or in a conversation you're overhearing, it's going to bring it back up regardless in your dream state in order to make a point to you about your current life. So. If you want your subconscious to borrow from nicer things, then yeah, you can, you know, avoid the walking dead and those or the news and, and just keep your mind occupied with comedy. That'll help. But right before bed doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to enter. Yeah. The subconscious wants to use it. It's going to use it. You know, you had mentioned about remembering dreams all the way back to your childhood. Sometimes I can't remember the dreams I had the night before or even when I wake up, I'm like, did you dream? I had no idea. So how do you tap into that if you can't remember what you dreamt about? Right, and that's normal. You're very, very normal. A lot of people never remember their dreams or they only remember them once in a while. <clears throat> and a lot of people think they just don't dream, but you do. It's a natural, necessary function of the brain. It enters REM sleep every 90 minutes throughout the night. So all you have to do to start remembering your dreams, and it's really easy. When you wake up in the morning, you got to give yourself three to five minutes of quiet still time in bed before you roll out of the bed and start your day because that's what kills your dream recall. You also want to stay in the exact same position you woke up in because that's the position your body was in when you were dreaming. And if you 
move when you wake up. It's like unplugging yourself from the dream you're just in. So it's really the easiest thing in the world. You just lay there and that's all it takes to remember your dream. Quiet your mind. Don't think about what you got to do today. Just lay there quietly. And, and no checking the phone. No checking the device. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, I think this is the culprit for a lot of people because I know that I check it way more than humanly acceptable. I do too. And I um, my computer here while I'm painting and I'll just keep checking, you know. <laughs> and, and now that I added Snapchat to this thing, that really throws a whammy into how many times I check. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, but, you know, there, there again, it's, I think it's the evolution of social. You know, at one time, you know, before we had social media, before we, we wrote, you know, we would get together and tell stories. And it could be from our dreams. It could be from what we did during the day. We're not doing that anymore. Everything becomes a post on social media now. Yeah. And I, and I think that it's also affecting how we interact with people. Mm -hmm. You know, politics right now has is, is become a, a boxing ring. <laughs> and, and everybody is getting offended for something. Yeah. And I, I just think that, I don't know. Um, Social was supposed to bring everybody together, but I think it's, it's really starting to create a, an environment where people just aren't sleeping anymore. It, yeah, it's, it's such a wonderful thing, but it's also a horrible thing. And I think we, as a human race, as social beings, need to find our balance. I think we're maybe in the teenagehood of it <laughs> where – you know, we have our hormones haven't balanced and we're, you know, not mature enough socially to handle it correctly. You know, because I don't care if you're doing your laundry right now and I don't care if your cousin pissed you off, you know, but if you've got something interesting you're working on, I'd like to see it. If you've got a funny joke to share, I'd love to hear it. You know, we just got to figure it out. I think we'll get there. Now, how do you balance your time? You know, being a, a dream analysis, uh, a pinup artist, and a Brian Cranston fan with your family. <laughs> well, Brian Cranston does take up a lot of my time. <laughs> no, I tell you, Breaking Bad ending was probably the best thing for my career. <laughs> because, you know, um, I, haven't, I haven't found that right balance yet because my pinup career is really just over a year old. When I first started, and it started with a bang, and I had, and I didn't expect it. I welcomed it, but I didn't expect it, and I didn't know what to do. And I had a waiting list that was a good six months long, and I was freaking out because I don't like to have people's money and not fulfill right away. Um, so I stopped working out. I stopped eating. I just have to paint. I have to paint. I have to get these out. And I even stopped doing radio interviews, which I do for my dream business to try to get used to this new business, but it started to balance out and I'm, I'm still weighing, you know, which is worth doing. Do I not do this radio interview because I have to get this painting done and I'm still working on it. it it's, I could have worse problems, you know? No, I made a, I made a post the other day about raising rates and you were the first one yeah. to share that. And I think that you actually got it and said, you know what? Yeah, I have to do this. Yes, and I was so glad to see that because I have ever since I started my pinup business, I've raised my rates twice now. Because also, as an artist, you don't know how to price yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, how do I figure it out? You know, I have to weigh the difficulty level. I have to weigh my time. You know, and and also the time it takes away from you know the dream business. Do I have to give up the speaking gig to get this done? It's very difficult to figure out. And then you have to look at what you've done so far. Okay, after all of these paintings, how much did it really come down to a week that I'm making? Mm -hmm. So, you know, at that point, and my husband's always nagging me, I have to raise your prices again. And so your, your point, your, your post supported him. And I'm like, I think this is a sign. <laughs> now, how many, it, it, you have it down pretty much now to a science where you can take someone's picture and, and craft them into a, a pinup. Yes. Now, you know, but, and I, and I think this is where entrepreneurs get it wrong, is that they don't include all that time 
all the materials, you know, all the advertising, everything that they do into their price. Yeah. And so now you're looking at this going, wow, I just put in a week's work of doing this and I could have just gone to McDonald's and made the same amount of money. Right. Yeah. It's definitely exactly how it works because before I even start drawing the sketch, I have to think about the person and their personality and what they want in the pinup. And I have to think about what pose would best fit. You know, it's, it's a lot of time before I actually physically start working on it. And that yeah. takes away from the dream business. And so there's that balance I have to figure out. But then there's also all the years of practicing, all the years of studying how to correctly paint that people don't, actually see you have to get paid for all that experience that you built into that and and it's not like you're just starting a business from scratch without ever learning how to do it and i think that's where people get upset they say oh well she's charging me x amount and i know it only took her 30 hours to do that right it took you a lot longer to do it's so what's what's your waiting for you now you, you said yeah you you, at one time it was almost six months yes yeah right in the beginning when it exploded now i'm about about five or six weeks waiting That's period. Not bad. So it's not bad. yeah and I, I you know i've also learned a rhythm and i've gotten better and quicker so it's you know it, it's working out but you know your husband's also an entrepreneur mm -hmm. so how does that work with two people that are very entrepreneur, you know, ish, there's nobody has the same schedule. Well, he's, we're very lucky in that our skills match perfectly. Our business skills match perfectly just as well as our personalities match perfectly. So we've got a great marriage and a great business partnership. He loves to be behind the scenes and he loves data and mm -hmm. management and all, so he handles all, all the, the back end of my websites and everything. And he handles the ad campaigns and I handle, I'm the image and the talent. And stuff. <laughs> You're the talent. <laughs> we won't tell Mike. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm the one writing the three <laughs> definitions and helping the people. And he's like keeping the side up and you know, it's just, it's, it's a very wonderful partnership. And how long have you been married? Uh, 20 years. Yeah, wow. Oh, wait, we're coming up on 21 next month. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, we just celebrated 27. And, and it just, sometimes it feels like it's, it goes by too quick. It does. You know. And, and the children grow so fast. <laughs> yeah, my, my kids never wanted to be part of my carpet cleaning business. You know, it's, it's hard work. Yeah. But now that I'm doing... You know, I'm teaching, I'm writing books, and I'm, I'm, I'm helping entrepreneurs, and they see me traveling, and they're like, Dad, can, can we work for you now? <laughs> my son oh, likes my pinup business. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. I don't think I'd uh, be allowed to uh, be in a room while you're doing that. <laughs> um, you know, but... It's not just, it's just not uh, women that you're drawing. You're drawing men as well. I've done, um, I've done one man so far. Um, and I do, no, I've done two men actually, kind of think of it. Um, and I have another man who wants me to do him, paint him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they, one guy did it, he was a, a radio personality. So he wanted me to paint him as a pinup as a joke, but to auction off for an MS charity. Um, and then a, a woman wanted me to incorporate her husband into the pinup. So I did that. And then I have another guy um, on the waiting list who wants me to paint him as a surfer dude. So, so that, you know, Oh, no, wait, I have another guy too. I did. Um, I painted him as a superhero. Nice. Yeah. So I think that's one of the reasons why the pinup business has exploded for me I mean and all of a sudden it's like overnight it exploded and it has been nonstop and I think it's because we live in the age of the selfie mm -hmm. and that's what I'm doing for you I'm painting a selfie for you and I'm painting you any way you want to be so I can paint you as a superhero I can paint you as a gorgeous pinup 
with you know triple D's and a 24 inch waist, you know, and, and people like to see themselves that way. You know, it, we are all about me, me, me. Right, and I think that's what differentiates you painting the image versus them going to a photographer and actually getting them to pose in a pinup situation because you can exaggerate their, their features. You can make them do all kinds of things that they couldn't do in a photograph. And I do all the work. They don't have to do anything but send me a picture of their face. <laughs> now, is there one that really struck you as being better than the others or are they, you know, after a while you're like, oh, they're all just, just, just all the same. I don't know if there's one I like the best. Every single one is unique because, you know, I incorporate the person's personality into it. And almost every single one of them comes with a challenge. Like one woman wanted a fur coat. I've never painted a fur coat before. I'm like, okay. But I rose to the challenge and I did it. One woman wanted me to put her on a horse. I'm like, a horse, okay. I rose to the challenge and I did it. Some women want cars. I hate I hate drawing and painting cars, <laughs> but I charge them for it appropriately and I do it and it's a challenge and I'm getting better and better at cars, like painting a grill, ugh, it's hard, it, but I'm getting there. You know, I get better and better with each one. So every one I look at as a gift that's giving me something that will help me grow. So you like the challenges? I do, except the cars. I really hate doing cars, but I'll do it. <laughs> So what's wrong with a curvy car versus a curvy woman? I, mean, it's... I know I've thought about that. It is, I just enjoy painting things that are alive as opposed to something that's mechanical. I don't know what that says about me, but. <laughs> so what do you think of this spinoff of, of Breaking Bad, this better call Sal? I can't. I tried. I tried. It's just. You know, within the first couple episodes on Breaking Bad, we had already dissolved bodies. You know, had shootouts and uh, Better Call Saul. It's the writing's very good, and I like how they're developing the character. But it's a snooze fest compared to Breaking Bad. It's just <laughs> yeah. It's, I started watching the new Supergirl. Uh, on, on CBS, and after about the third episode, everybody knew her identity. And I'm like, what's the point? <laughs> uh, what, what, ep what show did you say? Supergirl. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so you're not enjoying that? No. It's, you know, but I think that's the problem with shows today is that they're just rushing them out. You know, they, they, they think they got a good formula and it doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, you, all TV shows now have to use Breaking Bad as the bar. Because that show, oh. yeah, the, the I think the one episode, I think it was, I don't know what ep, uh, what season it was, but they yeah they dissolved that body in the in the bathtub, and then the bathtub fell through. The <laughs> it just kept getting worse and worse. And I'm like, wow. And what was what was unique is that I went on a trip, and and it was a church trip, and my priest was talking about it. I'm like, you're wow. Breaking Bad, what? <laughs> <laughs> but no, everybody, it just seemed like everybody was hooked on this show. Yeah. And, and Brian just kind of took the whole thing and just made it better. He just breathed life and soul into that character and, and made us love to hate him and hate to love him and dream about him. <laughs> but see, that's what you're doing. You're breathing life into your paintings, your pinups, and making them the dreams of... Teenage boys. <laughs> yeah. Or husbands. Or husbands, yeah. I like to think that I'm helping create spark back in marriages. You know, and, and some of these look identical to the person that you're painting. Well, here's something interesting about that that I have learned. Um, when it comes to the face of the person I'm painting, most of my clients are very picky. So I have to really get it right. When it comes to the body, they're fine. Have fun with the body, but the face I have to get right. So you put more time in the face than the rest of the body? Yes. Yeah, sometimes I'll have to redo a nose three, four times. You know, uh, like with Lori, um, she was my first two pinups. The second one I did of her, I had to start all over because 
just the face wasn't right. So I just scrapped it and started all over. I think that's another thing I have to try to incorporate into pricing is if I have to start over, but you know, I don't want to charge them because it's, it's my fault if I'm not getting it right. So, but there's the, you know, that pushes all my other clients back if I have to start all over. So it's, you know, still figuring it out. Is there a time frame that you try to push yourself, say, I got a, a week to do this, or I have a couple weeks to do this, or do you start one and then start another and go back? I'm the type of person I have to eat all my peas before I can eat my mashed potatoes. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's how I am with my pit-ups. I have to get one done before I can start the next, because I put everything I have into that pin-up, and it's like my world for a few days. And then I can move on to the next one. So with the color pencil pinups, I try to get two in a week. Sometimes I can get three in. Color pencils go pretty fast, but oils, I try. I haven't yet been able to get more than one a week done. Mm. Get the drying time and all that. Yeah, I know that you post a lot of your, your oils up. Um, I don't know if you post too many of your pencils up. Do you? Yeah, I've actually, I would say probably done more color pencil than oils because mm. it's more affordable right um, so most of them are but see it's hard to tell if it's color pencil or oil that's the cool thing about it and it, but that also makes it difficult for the the customer to decide so i'm like well it depends on how big of a piece of art you want or if budget isn't the problem yeah because then I, you post them in stages so you know you'll have the sketch but the top body the hair the face will be perfect and then the rest of it will just look unfinished and and I, I think it's great because you know in in one of my books i tell people to share your process and here you are sharing that process along the way so people can get an idea of your work of, of your perfection and 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 how you do things and i think that that's what makes you more believable as a as a credible artist well that's cool that you you write about that because i that is Definitely what has gotten me my sales is that I, I, sh I share the process because, you know, whoever I'm painting it for, they'll share it, the process so their friends see it, my friends see it, you know, so it spreads, but also it becomes an experience for the clients to watch their pinup come to life. Mm -hmm. you know? it, and, and I client after client tells me this was so much fun. You know, so it's not just a, a great piece of art you get. You also get an experience. But you also build up on that curiosity because you don't give that big reveal until the painting is fully done. Oh, yeah, I do that, too. This is what makes it fun for everyone who's just watching and isn't the client. After they, they get to watch it come to life, and then they see the final product, and then I give it a day, and then I reveal the side-by-side -side of my model and the pinup. And so, yeah, I, I like to build the suspense. You know, what, what is the, the ultimate feedback that you get from people that, you know, the husbands have gotten this pinup for their wives or their girlfriends, you know, and the girlfriend's like, you know, how do they react to you, to, to the painting? Most of the time, they're ecstatic. And, and, you know, if, if the person received it as a gift and they didn't know they were going to get it, they'll contact me and say, wow, you really captured me. This is so great. I love this. You know, I've only had one person that was unhappy because she thought the head was too small. <laughs> <laughs> you made me paint you on a piano and now you're going to bitch. <laughs> but everyone just loves it, you know, because it's, they get to see themselves because it's about them, not about me. Mm -hmm. And they get to see themselves in this new way and they feel beautiful, you know, and, and if throughout the process as I'm building it for you, you know, I talk to you and I call you beautiful and I make you feel beautiful. And then I show you, look, you are, you're beautiful. And so it's, you know, I like to think that I'm, I'm helping their esteem, their confidence in themselves. And I think that's very important because there's a lot of people out there that have no self-esteem or they can't see the real beauty in themselves. Yeah. You know, I, I know with me, you know, with writing, you know, sometimes I, I, you know, they say that you're supposed to structure your day, with, you know, write this time, write this time. I find that I can never do that. So I'm always taking my laptop somewhere. And if I have a thought, you know, I'm jotting it down. Yeah. That's got to be hard for you because you got to pick up the paints, you got to pick up the pencils. 
And if you have a creative thought, they're not always there. Right. Well, you know, and this is what I think makes it easier for like a portrait artist like me, whether I'm you're painting pinups or you're painting pets or family portraits. Um, you don't have to think about what am I going to paint? You know what you're going to paint. Now you may have like with me, I may have to think about what kind of, you know, clothing am I going to put on her, if any, <laughs> you know, and, and pose and, and, and that takes the creative element, but you know, I'm given what I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint this person. Okay. I'm going to sit down and do it now. Do you get stumped? Um, well, some are more difficult than others. Um, I, I think probably the hardest part of the whole process for me is before I even sketch, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking about my clients and, you know, they'll, they'll give me an idea, you know, okay, I want vintage. I want, you know, an old timey radio. So they'll, they'll tell me what they want, but then I have to sit there and, and, and try to match a good pose with their face. And, you know, do they want me to make them flirty? Do they want me to make them seductive? You know, it, I, it has to all come together in my head and that can take me a couple hours to let it formulate. So. So there's a, there's a whole list of things that you ask your clients what they want. Or do you yeah. do that after you started painting? Uh, before we get, before I do the sketch, well, some have no idea what they want and I have to try to help guide them towards what would work for them. Um, some already know, and that's always great. That's helpful. Um, but it, each one is, is, is very, very unique to the person. And then, yeah, the hardest part is before I make a sketch. It's just, I have to see it in my head and it, it takes a while for it to form before I see the full complete thing and then I'll sketch it. Sounds like a, a lot of discovery because you're trying to come up with a vision. Yes. Before, before you even put it on paper. Yeah, but at least I have a starting point. I have the person. I know who I'm drawing, but now I have to put them in a new world. Is there ever a time where you had to say no? Hmm. I've had to say no to some dream clients. I, I haven't, because I, I get wackadoodles, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> I haven't had to say no to any pinups yet. <laughs> wackadoodle, is that, a, is that a Florida term? <laughs> well, yeah, I am in Florida and all the crazies are here. But yeah, there's some people that, you know, this one client, well, she wasn't a client, so I didn't take her, but she paid and I had to give her money back. So I was like, I can't help you. Because it, she, she was so out there that I really felt like I needed to find out how to contact Justin Timberlake and warn him. <laughs> That's how bad she was. <laughs> You know, yeah. I think that's important because you know in your mind what type of client that you're looking for and you're willing to give their money back if they don't fit that, that, that uh, criteria in your, in your head. And, and I think that's very hard for a lot of entrepreneurs to understand is that they take all these clients and they don't know how to say no. Right. And then it comes back and burns them and they're like, well, what did I do? I tried to help them. No. I know what you're saying. Um, like with, with the dream clients, the few that I've had to turn away, I turn them away because I know they just want me to tell them, okay, yes, you're psychic. Your dreams are psychic. But I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what the real deal is. And, um, and I've seen you preach about that it's okay to turn away clients. And I, I have thought about that a lot with my pinup um, career and I haven't quite gotten that one client yet that I know is going to be too difficult to handle but I'm waiting for it and, and I know I will have to apply the just say no at some point I've had some that I was ready to kick to the curb I was like no it, it's a challenge I'm growing <laughs> but after a while don't the challenges get old don't you just want to have a, a peaceful business where you know that you have these exciting clients that just want to come to you and say, take my money. I'll do whatever you want. 
Yeah. I, the, the pin of business is still new enough that I, I, I haven't got to that point yet. But yes, in the dream business, which I've been doing for 20 years, since 96. Um, yeah, I, I, and I get that way with like radio station, not just clients that pay me for a consultation, but radio station clients who, you know, I come on weekly or monthly or whatever. And um, after maybe a year of doing their show every Thursday morning, and I realized, you know, I never get a book sell or a client from doing your show and I get up early to do it and I, I just can't do it anymore. It's not worth it for me. So that's something that I've definitely had to do a few times. It's hard, but you have to do it. Yeah. Cause you've, you've put your heart and soul into it. You've, you've developed, I, I don't know, maybe a, you developed a, 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 uh, wow. I lost my train of thought. You, you've developed a, a routine and, and you believe that their clients are actually followers, you know, these, these, the radio participants, but they're not really helping you at all. Right. I'm giving them entertainment for the show. And yeah, they're giving me free advertising for my websites, my books, my services. But then, but if I'm not seeing the return, you know, I get up early for this show every Thursday and it's just not worth it. I could be dreaming. <laughs> <instead>. <laughs> You know, how do people get a hold of you? You know, if they wanted to have you design a pinup or analyze their dreams, I'm sure you have what two different websites or multiple websites. I have multiple websites and that's been a challenge. And we finally conglomerated them all in all my stuff's in one place. It's the dream Don't forget the, the, and that's where you can um, get my book. You can set up a private reading with me. You can play around with my free instant dream decoding site. And that's where you can get a pinup. You as a pinup is there as well. So let's talk about your book. When did it come out? It came out in March of 11. Oh, my husband cleaned my office and they're not there anymore. I was going to show it to you. <laughs> well, darn him. Uh, yeah, it's called Dream On It, Like Sleep On It dream on it. It came out in March of 2011. This is my first, um, I, I self-published my first two books and this is the first one that was through a publishing house, St. Martin's Press. And it's available everywhere on Amazon as well. And you can get it electronically. And it's, um, the book that Facebook helped me write. So most of those dreams that are in there came through Facebook and it's, um, broken up into chapters where each chapter is focused on a certain type of dream and how that type of dream is connected to a different part of you. For example, um, all the animal dreams we have, that's a whole chapter. That's all about your behaviors. Um, the people chapter is about all the most common people we dream about our parents, old classmates, the ex. The people chapter is and people dreams are really all about the different parts of your personality. Um, the travel and vehicle chapter is all about the different kinds of vehicles and the way we travel and dream space travel, whatever that chapter and those dreams are connected to your goals and how you're reaching your goals. The nightmare chapter is all about your difficult and ignored issues. So each type of dream that we get is connected to part of ourself. And so the, book teaches you how to recognize what this, what part of you the dream is about and how to find the advice you're giving yourself through the dream. But a lot of it is based on psychology, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, that's a battle I've had, especially when I first started my dream career was that, no, this is psychology. It's not psychic at all. It does deal with the psyche, but it's your own thoughts, your night thoughts, your subconscious dream thoughts and um we've come a long way since then i think most people do realize now as opposed to back in the 90s when i started that the dreams are coming from the self and is you know a helpful part of ourself an intelligent part of ourself and not a psychic phenomenon so uh what was the question <laughs> <sighs> So there's no 900 numbers I have to call, right? No, no, no. <laughs> no that's how it started, though, actually. 
um, that's what actually got started was the psychic 900 numbers that were huge, you know, in the 90s. And my husband being an entrepreneur and always wanting to find the next business he can work on, I suggested a dream line. I said, because then like a psychic line, a dream line will be helpful and real. And so we did have a 900 number in the very beginning. It went... <laughs> <laughs> But what we learned from that is that there's an enormous amount of interest in dreams. People don't want to pay for it over the phone with a 900 number, but people want to know. So I spent the last 20 years finding out how to reach people and how to make this work monetarily. Right. That's the part. Well, you know, and, and then in today's day and age where people have these phones, mm -hmm. where they have instant access, they try to self-diagnose themselves. Yeah. And, um, you know, most of the times they're wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they don't want to pay for anything. No, people so, don't want to pay. So how do you overcome that when someone, you know, insists that they know more than you? <laughs> I do get that a lot. Um, one thing that I suggest you don't do when you get publicity, whether you're on a TV show or you're in a print, probably like Cosmo or, or uh, Reader's Digest does an article on dreaming and, you know, they cite me as the expert. Don't read the comments because there's always going to be someone that says, well, I'd just like to know how she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> That's not what this means. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so you've spent 20 years doing comparative analysis between dream imagery and the content of the day, and you know this? <laughs> you know, yeah, and don't read comments. <laughs> no, and and I, I'm amazed at how many people actually will spend time to comment on somebody they don't even know. Yeah. You that know? drives me crazy. That's like, do you know me? I mean, I, have we had a conversation? You know, and, and, but they do it to lawyers, they do it to doctors, they, mm -hmm. they do it to total strangers, and it's like everybody wants to have a comment. Well, yeah, uh, that's social media for you. Everyone's got an opinion. Yeah, and, and I think that's a lot, of, a lot of people take those opinions to heart. And, um, you know, then you have these, you know, teenage bullying or cyberbullying, mm -hmm. and uh, people have nightmares, and they, yeah. You know, then they then they kill themselves, and and it's it's tough. Um, you know, I I was reading a book the other day about cyberbullying, and um, yeah, it's just um, I think it's just another one of those things where they they can't bully people in real life, so they got to do it online. It's easier when you're behind the keyboard and mm -hmm. knowing that's who you are. It, yeah, I think that's one of the the balance we have to figure out as a society with the social media. We have, and, you know, how do you, do you regulate that? I mean, you know, yeah. how, how do you handle that? You know, and I've written books on social media, and, and, you know, my whole thing is share the positive because people don't want to really hear about the negative. We get too much of that already on the news. Yeah. You know, but... I, I think sharing the negative is le easier for people. It's some kind of release. Some, maybe it's cathartic, some kind of release for them to get their ang angry out on someone they don't know. Yeah. Do it anonymously. <laughs> you know, I guess it makes them feel better. It's so bad. what do you do when you're not painting, when you're not... Um, Analyzing dreams. What do you do for fun? This is sad. <laughs> I'll work out. I love to work out. But um, the sad thing about it is that I'd rather paint than do anything else. So I don't have the greatest social life. <laughs> because I spend so much in this room painting and drawing. But I would, can't think of anything I'd rather do. Well, I'm up for hanging with my family, but you know, yeah. and, and the funny thing is every time you post a picture with your hair and, and the way it is, you always remind me of that, that Disney character on Brave. Oh and see today I tamed my hair. Yeah. 
<laughs> I should have let it do it. <laughs> but I, I think that, you know, you're really, you know, doing some wonderful things, you know, and, and people need to look at what you're doing and emulate what you're doing, not necessarily in the dreams or, or in the pinups, but seeing that you're raising prices, seeing that you're, you're, you're being very uh, critical on who you accept as clients, you know, getting that press releases out there and, and getting the, the publicity because there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that have no idea how to do any of that. Well, I've been, I have to pat myself on the back for the PR part. I have done very well with that. I do my own PR, but I think what helps is that I'm a really big ham. So <laughs> I like an audience <laughs> and cameras on me. So that, that helps drive it. <laughs> but, you know, don't be afraid to put yourself out there and, um, don't let someone say no, you know, keep you from going forward. Learn from that no, because you're going to get a lot of no's, a lot of no's. Um, but just keep going and, and, and get yourself out there. Social media is wonderful for, for a lot of entrepreneurs. Um, and if you can get on radio or TV or in print, you got to find a way to make your product or service fit into a story because it's ultimately when you get on TV, when you get on radio to promote yourself, it's not about you. It's about what people can relate to that you offer because I do so well on radio because I'm really talking about the listener. When they call in and say, I had this dream that, you know, I was driving a truck and then a huge wave came and, and swept me away and then there were zombies. Um, you know, I'm helping the listener and I'm giving an interesting, you know, radio interview. But at the same time, what I'm really doing is promoting myself, but it doesn't sound that way. Has, there, ever, has there ever been a dream that kind of threw you? That, that you didn't know how to answer? Um, on radio, you know, you have limited time. Mm -hmm. Then you got to get, you know, sound bites and you got to get it in before the commercial break. So there's, there's been some where I haven't been able to really help the person because sometimes you have to really, really dig and sometimes the person doesn't want to own up. So there have been times I haven't done well on radio, but I've never had a dream personally through my private, you know, consultations. I haven't been able to help someone with. Sometimes it takes longer because I have to dig more. Um, but in that sense, no, because it's all about asking the right questions and guiding the person towards their own answers. You know, and we, we get there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but you have fun doing it. It is fun. It's really fun because... The cool thing about dreams is that they're a renewable resource. There's always something new every night that your brain is coming up with, some kind of crazy scenarios putting you in to give you a message about yourself. It's, it's, it seems magical the way dreams work, but they're so practical. But we have to open up a little bit and we have to remember our dreams. Yes. And I think that if we knew how to do that a little bit better, uh, we could, uh, I think, I don't know, have better businesses, have better relationships, have, you know, more entertaining lives. Yeah, it, it's what I love about dreaming on a personal level is that it's a really great way to stay plugged into your family. Because if you share your dreams in the morning over coffee, like my husband and I do, you know, you, it never gets boring because you always have something new to talk about. And it, it's a very open and honest way to express yourself because we're so honest in our dreams because we're not, the conscious mind isn't in control. So it can't hold back. You know, you're, you're completely unleashed. Your subconscious is, is, has full reign when you're dreaming. And so your dreams are a very, very, very honest part of who you are, very honest expression of what you're going through. Um, so sharing your dreams in the morning over breakfast or over coffee is a great way to stay tuned in to your loved ones. I think if I shared a, a dream about being chased down by a peanut butter car, I <laughs> probably get locked up. Peanut butter and teeth car. <laughs> oh. Yeah. My kids would look at me like, dad, 
No, uh -uh. you're going away. <laughs> well, my family's used to it. <laughs> you know, this is this has been fun, and and uh, you know, I really enjoyed it. Now we're we're running out of a uh, time. I think we have a few more minutes. But is there anything that you want to share with any of the viewers out there? Uh, you know, a last minute thought. Um, you know, how they can get a hold of you besides your website. Anything. Um, well, you know, the usual plug, if you want to pin up for yourself or self, or if you want to talk with me about a dream, a dream analysis is really one of the best things you can do for yourself. It's like therapy. Um, go to my site, thedreamzone.com. Um, and just for people who are, are watching this to learn how to do business better, um, don't be afraid to grow accept the challenges that that your career offers you don't be afraid to change your career you never know you know if you're unhappy and you, you know you struggle to just get through the day go ahead and try to change it up because it can happen you can be a secretary today a year from now you could be a motivational speaker you can do it don't be afraid you know, just like life, your passions change. Mm -hmm. you know? And and I think you have to adapt to those passions. You don't, you know, just because like me, I was a carpet cleaner for 20 years doesn't mean I have to be that for the rest of my life. Right. You know, now I'm an author and speaker. You know, you, you know, you, you did dream analysis for all those years. You still like it, but you're finding a new career in pinups. And that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So follow your dreams. <laughs> You know, that's why you have them and not just the nighttime dreams, but, but the dreams you have for yourself. They're there because you're meant to have that in your life somehow. So go for it. You know, and, and uh, as Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, you can do it. I, I think it, it, it's just a fabulous way to end this because, you know, you started out um, not going the direction of, of Disney Studios, but look at you now. But I wound up, I kind of came full circle in a way. <laughs> right. Maybe R rated Disney, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some of the stuff that we're putting out today, I think would. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> so, hey, thank you. It was great. And um, I wish you all the, the luck in the world. Thank you. This was fun. I appreciate it.